Okay, so we're going to make the background with the smoosh technique where you just take your pant stamp pad and just kind of place it down in a couple different places. And just add your colors in a few places. Smoosh them down onto your glass media mat. And then lightly spritz with water. And it will spread. I like mine to be very fluid because it creates a more organic look, I guess. I just like it. And you just smash it down. And you're going to pull it off. And you're going to get these nice lines. You just kind of roll it around. If you get a line that you don't like, you're going to dry it in between every every smush. That way you build up layers of ink and it gives a really nice effect. You're going to dry this. If you dry the back side, it helps keep it from bending and curling. this big white spot right here that I don't particularly like so you just take your card and smoosh it down but if you don't like the water run effect just kind of blot it with your paper towel and dry it You can add a little bit more water, take up the rest of this pink and purple colors, smash it down. Yeah. Just kind of pick up some of it, blot it off just a little bit. a little bit right there and there and there just kind of go all the way around it I don't like to be wasteful when I'm using my inks so I tend to have a lot of brightness a lot of colors going on but that works pretty good so now we're just going to clean up this mess. If you want, you could have just grabbed another piece of paper and cleaned that up. But for video's sake, I'm not going to do that at the moment. So, and make sure your card's really dry. I find that when it comes to stamping, if your card is wet, it will not give you a good impression. Your ink will miss. So make sure that your backgrounds are dry, especially if you're using the oxide inks. They have that the oxide finish, which is kind of chalky. It will not, you will not get a good impression if it's not dry. So it just takes time to dry it. And you can either dry it with a heat tool or just leave it to dry if you have patience for that. And you can kind of just run your hands down like this and just pull that and it will keep your cord nice and flat. Okay, so that's our background. Kind of doesn't look like much now, but when you start stamping, it totally changes. Okay, let's set 
those off to the side. And we're going to stamp. So I have here a Tim Holtz Ionic Studios platform. I highly recommend if you have problems stamping, use a platform. It is in, it helps so much. I would not be able to do this without. Um, I kind of like this spot for my light. So I'm going to change it, turn it around a bit. And what's nice is you can just put your stamp wherever you want. Close it. Press it down. I'm going to stamp in Earth Pine Claire Nocturne. And just lightly tap all over. And the reason that you tap is so that your ink actually kind of soaks in and you don't get smudges. If you just rub it like this, you get the lines from the ink pad on your stamp. When you stamp off your image, it will show that. So just press down. Do a good press. Let it rest. If you don't let it rest, your ink will pick it up. It will be on your stamp and not on your card. It's a handy thing about having a platform. If you have spots that you miss and you don't like, you can just re-stamp it off in the same place. You should clean your stamps with an alcohol-free baby wipe, which I'm very bad about doing. And just rub them on, clean it. And I'll take this to the sink and actually give it a good rinse later. Put that to the side. Okay. Now for the majestic stamps, they are teeny tiny and the stamp ink pad does not, or the stamp platform does not work. So take a pile of paper and I have some old mail that I'm using because I don't like to waste paper. I don't understand that. We're going to take our little handy dandy thing. And this card is what came with the cardio stamps. And I kind of used it for some inspiration. So, and I don't have multiples of these, so I'm going to take them one by one. And I took the largest lily first and I'm going to stamp that in um, warm breeze so this is just like a normal acrylic block you just stamp down and I'm going to stamp around about one third of the way up and two-thirds of the way over. So I just have this corner that's not stamped. I start in this corner and you just stamp down, twist it, turn it, do a second generation, pick up, and just randomly stamp. You can put these really in any place, turn them, just kind of stamp all over and maybe one more right there so I'm just kind of kind of stamp that off clean that put it back so we're moving on to the next size and we have our versifying Claire and purple delight Stamp it, press down, random spots, I'm not really doing second generation with this color too much, 
just in a few places. And maybe one more there. And there. So I want to clean them off. And again, I will clean these better later when I'm done. And we're going to take this one that's more like a bud. We'll move on to Monarch, Conversifying Claire Monarch. Make up. And since this is a darker color, I'm kind of leaving it more in the center. And just random. Randomly stamp. It's okay if you stamp over something that you've already stamped. It doesn't hurt a thing. It builds up the layers. And it looks nice when you're done. So I'm just going to add a few of those, not too many. And we're going to move on to the foliage. So this is kind of like a little leaf stamp. We're going to use Shady Lane. And down. And at this point, if you kind of want to look through your block here, and you can kind of make trellises to where you know, your leaf stems would be. They don't need to be perfect. It's okay. And stamp, stamp, stamp. some of those in some random places. Now we're going to move on to the next foliage stamp and this one's a little more kind of like a vine. We're just going to continue to use Shady Lane and this time I'm going to try to connect to where that bud is and just trellis it down. I have an open spot here. And we can just kind of connect it, make it look like the foliage is laying down, coming down into the fairy like she's just discovered this great lily. Okay. If you can hear my dog whining. I'm sorry. She's quite a little character. So moving on to the smallest little stamp here. Now we're going to add some burdent just to give some break in the green. Doesn't show up real well, but it's nice. And if you want to have some foliage coming behind the flowers, you fit perfect. And I'm, again, I'm just doing this in a very random, random placement. That looks pretty okay. Maybe put one there. Might be building it up a little bit too much, but... That's me. I like everything to be very colorful. I have all these eeks, so I like to use them. Okay. Let's start with the stamping. Let's set those to the side. And now we're going to make a moon, her little sun ray thing. So I have just a template. I have a little piece of Sweet Poppy stencil tape, very low tack just because I slip it inside every single time without fail. Can't help it. And we're going to use the confetti to kind of pull out some of this white. And typically I do this on my glass media mat. I don't need it to be on the paper. 
these Lavinia stamps stencil brushes are fabulous and I just put it on there put it in my lid so I'm not wasting ink on paper and then just kind of blot it off just do a little bit on paper just to make sure that you don't have a big bright thing start on your acetate and just very lightly flick all the way around I don't do it too heavily where the stamped image is because I don't I like my silhouette stamps to be very dark I don't want ink over the top of them and then very lightly go in a circle circular motions around your mask you can pull your mask off and get this great glow I like to bring it in just a little bit so I'm just very lightly very lightly you can do this with the tip and just bring some of that color in that's that now we're going to take our uniball this is a signo white pin that i purchased at walmart um but it's great for some highlights and i just like to highlight a little bit I highlight on the outside of my stamped image as well as I can and hopefully my head's not a picture I'm not the best at this and I also like to just smooth this out because I do not want it to be like this super stark line I want it to look like a highlight And if you just kind of rub it, yeah, you get it on your fingers, but I don't really care about that. It washes off. And I'll highlight your hands. I'm going to fast forward through a lot of the things. And down the side of her leg just to get that break up. Now we're done. And I'm also going to do, I'm going to do the tops of her antennas. And some of her hair. Just a few. And do it around her face very carefully. I'm just going to blot it. Just not work as well. Lid. Okay, and now for some glitter, we're going to add some Jelly Roll Sakura. This is from the Stardust Collection in silver. And I like to give the wings a little sparkle. And now I don't fill in every little hole. I just kind of very lightly just go over the wings. And then rub it. And you can do every one of these little holes here. So her wings get a lot of sparkle. If you don't like sparkle, don't add the glitter. Totally up to you. 